And I'm going to say this even though I know most of you probably agree with me. So I'm not doing this to correct anybody here. But the, the, the church in America that has backed up and bowed to political spirits and the fear of man and has decided there are parts of this book they're just not going to talk about or preach. Needs to wake up to the fact that everything in here needs to be talked about and declared and taught. Not in a condemning way, not in a judgmental way, not in a hurtful way, but in a way of love, in a way that God is love, in a way that is redemptive, in a way that is healing. But it, nevertheless, this is the truth. And if you're ashamed of it, go join some other club. Lord, forgive me for being so mean. Amen. We are kingly. We are priestly. We repair history's breaches. We rebuild ancient ruins. We restore streets that are crumbled up and broken down. That means we heal racism. We go back to the age-old foundations and we restore them. And we say, these are our roots. This is the foundation. We're going to rebuild this. We're going to restore the streets. That's who we are. We're not cave dwellers. We're street repairers, city builders, history healers. We heal broken hearts. We set captives free. We set it liberally, the bruised. Jesus, his mission statement is our mission statement. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, and he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor, to set the captives free, heal the oppressed, set it liberally, the bruised. I've come to put things back together. Ah. We are strong. We are more than conquerors. We always triumph in Christ. Did you know the Bible says that's your portion that you're supposed to always? I told the devil a few times, you knocked me down, but I'm back up. And if you somehow knock me down again, I'll be back up again until I take you out. Because I will win this battle. Because God said, I always. Always. I always triumph in Christ. Because the greater one is in me everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. The greater one than the one in the world is with me. He'll be there on the plane today. He'll be there when you walk by your prodigal and brush up against him and just leave a little bit of the greater one. Just hug him. They don't have to know what you're doing. Don't even talk about it. Just when you give him a hug in your heart, in a whisper, just say, I'm releasing the greater one to you. You don't have a chance. I told one woman praying for her son, her prodigal. I said, you need, to get, you, need, you need to cut up a little prayer cloth, some kind. Take the sole out of his shoe, put it under there, and let him. He'll be walking on the anointing and your prayers all day long. Not only did he get saved, but before he got saved, one of his rebel friends, they did drugs together, needed to borrow his shoes for something, and borrowed his shoes and put his shoes on, and he got saved too. He got saved first. Because you can't walk around on the anointing 
of Holy Ghost and the Word of God and the decrees of the Lord and the blood of them. You can't walk around on that and carry demons with you. It's the greater ones in you. You're Eleazar. You're a Dino. You, you don't get tired. You get tired, but you just hold on. Holy Ghost will come take your hand for you and just... He'll do it while you sleep. Sometimes I wake Cece up speaking in tongues. Too tired to pray, so Holy Ghost just prays through me while I sleep. Come to him and the battle's over. Stepping over bodies. Finally make it to Adino. It's okay, the battle's over. She's going to have to help me. That's who you are. You're not a cave dweller. You are a carrier of the greater one. And I know it's not what you've always experienced, but I tell you what God says, you, you're never supposed to lose. Because when you lose, he'll turn it around. He said, what if the prodigal dies where he gets saved? Well, just decree they're not going to die and, t- and take authority over death. I had God tell me, he said, it's going to take a while to, get, to pray this person into the kingdom. Well, 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 Lord, you know. He said, well, well, what he said, no, 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 no. You don't think I can keep them alive? Just cover them with my protection. And while you're praying over them, just decree my anointing and my protection on them. I won't let the enemy take them. You, just, you, you need to let your God kind of get out of the box of limitation. Because the... Crazy man that's throwing spears at you today is going to fall on his own sword one day and you're going to sit on his throne. We are eagles. We soar. We molt. We get new wings, feathers. Beaks and our talons get sharp again, and we go through a process of renewal. Say, oh yeah, that's cute. No, that's Bible. That's what He says about us. That God will do for you like the eagle. Some of you are ready to die. God wants to give you ten or fifteen more years. Some of you slow down too much. God says, "I need you for what's coming." You can't, you, can't, you can't do what you used to do. Well, get on the treadmill a little bit. Walk a little bit. I don't care if you can't do 50 pounds anymore. Do five. And get to the point where you can still lay hands on the sick. We're eagles. We're descendants of a lion. We're warrior soldiers clothed with his armor, filled with power, commissioned to authority, and filled with Holy Spirit. That's who we are. I'm done. Come on. Come on. Come on, I, I, come on, I want you to say, I want you to say it with me well, at least one time, okay? We're going to say America shall be saved. Here we go. America shall be saved. Come on.